So in the last video, we were testing some 45 Colt with 25 grains of 3F black powder and a 405 grain 4570 projectile, which I think just about everybody will say is rather unorthodox, to say the least. Now, I only loaded up a few of these just to try them to make sure that they would work, which is what I showed you in the last video. So in this video, I'm going to show you the chronograph results and how it did on paper. Now, some people left me some comments in the last video where I showed up close the primer situation. Now, after I was looking at those spent cases, the primers were extremely flattened off, which tells us that it's got some high pressure going on. I don't know if it's 44 mag pressure. I have no way of telling. So all I can do is eyeball it. Now, some people pointed out that it looked like a few of those cases had a crack around the head. After I got them out of the washer machine, I gave them a thorough inspection. They all look fine. Nothing's cracked. Nothing's out of the ordinary. They all look great. So nothing to worry about there. But after looking at the primers, I was not comfortable trying them in any of my open tops. So not through the Walker and not through the Dragoon or anything of the like. So it was strictly the Ruger Blackhawk and the 1894 Marlin, which actually both did pretty well. So here's the chronograph results for the Marlin, the Bisley, and I guess you could say how it did on paper. All right, so 4570 compact. Six ninety two. Let's see if I got a couple of more spins left, actually. Six eighty nine. Oh, you could hear it whizzing. Six forty nine. Six ninety. Six forty six. Well, the Ruger had an average velocity of six hundred and seventy three feet per second with a max spread of forty six, and the bullet hits with four hundred and eleven foot pounds of energy, which I think is enough to make any forty five ACP take notice. Forty five seventy compacts. Let's see what happens. 909. 894. I cannot tell where it's hitting. Can you tell? It yeah. left. It left? Okay. Yeah. Right. Low. low, it looked low. There we go. Jesus. 897. Did that plate? I did hear it, yeah. <laughs> 887. You know what's weird? That you know what's weird is I can I have to aim right at it. I was aiming low, thinking it would hit high. Oh really? But yeah, I aim right at it at 60 yards. Well those work just fine. Yeah. Now, the Marlin had an average velocity of 897 feet per second with a nice tight spread of 22, and the bullet hits with 724 foot-pounds of energy. So here's the comparison between the two. We have a little over 200 feet per second worth of gain with the Marlin, a tighter spread with the Marlin, and much more energy due to the higher velocity. I'm gonna hit high, I'm going to aim underneath it. Yeah? Sure. Yeah, because the first one's going to go over the over the target. <laughs> okay, so 4570 compact. 9. You were correct, sir. See that smoke ring? Oh yeah. That was cool.
I got two on there. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I know it's only 25 grains, but with a 405 grain bullet, it recoils pretty good. I bet. Hey, that, that two-shot group looks really good. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Look at that. That's a nice two-shot group right there. Now, somebody might be looking at that wondering what the hell was going on with that paper target. Well, that was just pretty much me being a dumbass. I already knew that they shot ridiculously high. I didn't bring my sticky targets. And all I had was a piece of two inch tape. So we tore a piece off. And for whatever reason, I put it way up at the top. Stupid, my fault, I know. Now, I don't typically shoot pistols at 60 yards like that. But even at that distance, it was shooting high. Now, when I was shooting at the paper target, I was aiming right at my piece of tape and it still was shooting over it. Each shot, I was bringing it down just to get it on paper. It shoots about 12 inches high at 15 yards in the pistol. In the rifle, it was much more easier to deal with. So, sorry. Now, overall, these did not perform bad. A lot of people were saying in the last video that they thought the bullets were going to be tumbling when they hit the target or the paper. They weren't. They shot pretty good. And once I figured out where to hold with the pistol, it went pretty well. But again, we're talking Walker point of aim, which anyone who knows how that shoots is way underneath the target generally. Hey, 4570 compact wannabe. But once I figured it out, and I was pretty much out of ammo, I got the hang of it, and it worked pretty well. But it was much more entertaining and easier to shoot in the Marlin. And I didn't try it at 220 yards, but I did try it at 180, and it went pretty well. Still, I was aiming over it, expecting to lob that thing out there, and still they were hitting high then. It's pretty much point of aim with that rifle and that load. 4570 compacts. It's closer than I thought. Oh man. Ah. Yeah! <laughs> so as far as the overall performance goes, really not bad at all. The velocity and the energy in the pistol is pretty much equal to any respectable 45 ACP, being that it's moving slower, but it's a lot heavier. The rifle, like all things, is going to have more velocity due to the longer barrel, and it's easier to shoot, or at least it was for me, easier to deal with, and actually worked pretty well. Now, I don't think I'm going to be loading up 500 of these and shooting them every weekend, but if you do want to try it, it works pretty well. So, as usual, folks, if you thought this video didn't suck, do me a favor and hit the like button and consider subscribing. And if you did think it sucked, well, then go make your own damn video. Same thing, 4570 compact, wannabe. Hey. Yeah, aim, aim low. Three for three? End on a hit? That that time, I didn't get to end on a hit. <laughs>